Hello and welcome to another Digimedia Dude tutorial. I'm your host, Marcelo Lewin, the Digimedia Dude. Today, my guest presenter is Ben Brownlee, a VFX artist, digital media specialist, and instructor with over 16 years of production experience across a number of disciplines. Ben, welcome. Hi, Marcelo. Good to be here. Well, I'm glad you're here doing another tutorial for me. We've had a long, long relationship with uh, previous other ventures I had, and we worked together before, so I'm happy to be working with you again. Yeah, me too. It's always a pleasure. So today our tutorial is titled Simple Sky Replacement in DaVinci Resolve, which is actually pretty appropriate since it's actually raining here in LA, and uh, the sky looks really bad here, actually. So when I look out the windows, it will actually, the sky will be replaced, or you're not going that far? Oh, well, it, it depends how, uh, how much time we've got. I see. Okay. <laughs> now, um, can you tell us real quickly, I mean, we're going to be doing this in DaVinci. What tools are you going to be using within DaVinci to do that? And then you can jump in and start it. Really, the only tools that we're going to be looking at, we're going to be taking a look at the, well, in the color room, we're just going to be doing a quick primary correction. But mainly, it's a case of just how we get the key working and, in the edit, how we start to structure our timeline. Back in, the, uh, back in the edit room. Because one of the things that's um, well, actually improved a, a, a whole lot since I've started using DaVinci, it's been quite a few years now, is just how much easier things are now that we've got uh, a much more sort of fully functioned timeline set up where you can start to, uh, to sort of layer, layer things up just like you could do in actually pretty much any other NLE software. So what's interesting is that a lot of the NLEs are actually incorporating a lot of coloring tools into their NLEs, but DaVinci is going the other way around because it's been the coloring tool of choice for, for so many years. Now they're trying to become and are slowly becoming a true NLE on their own, right? Yeah, and I think that's, um, that's a really interesting sort of decision that's, that's been made with it. And the fact that you've now got, well, Fusion as well is uh, with, the, uh, well, with the, the new version of Resolve just around the corner and being able to sort of incorporate sort of fusion in the same way that within Premiere you can incorporate After Effects compositions you can just sort of pop back and forth within fusion uh, directly from uh, directly from within Resolve it's it's going to be a, a very interesting interesting sort of sort of structure it's definitely an interesting time uh, to be doing all this stuff but yeah. you know what enough of our conversation here because I know people want to check out this tutorial so I'm going to hand it over to you and if Perfect. I have some questions throughout it I'll jump in cool all right well it's um it's actually fairly straightforward as the uh, tutorial is titled it's simple sky replacement so what i've got here is i've got my little little boat situation so with a uh, a perfectly flat sky which is very very uninviting so i'm just going to do primary color correction in my first node so i'm not even going to do very much with this i'm just going to increase the um increase the contrast just by dropping the lift uh, bumping up the gain a little bit and maybe just touching up the saturation a little bit here. So the overall picture looks looks pretty good, but it's just a very tedious looking sky. So I'm going to come up and I'm going to add a, another serial node. And just using the, um, the qualifier, I'm just going to start to key the sky. So if we see over on the little node, you can, you can sort of see kind of what it's doing, but I'm going to go Shift and H just to show a little highlight here. And we can improve the key uh, as we need to. So I'll just sort of tap that down a little bit. See where the where the weakest bits are. Somewhere around about there. And so we've got, it's not a perfect, perfect key yet. But the great thing is, just as we if we were doing sort of work with, with any sort of qualifiers or with any sort of secondaries, we can take our key and we can then add a window to it as well. So just by going into the power windows, we can just come in and just do a fairly simple, straightforward little window there. So what we've got here now is a combination of the qualifier key and the power window uh, mask. So here's where it gets a bit interesting. Let's just hit, uh, Shift and H again to come out of highlight mode. We could also use the um, button up here. But this is, this is where it gets a bit interesting because this is where you'd usually sort of just want to maybe, you know, change the color of the sky just as a regular uh, sort of color correction. We can do that there as well. 
But if we go back into the edit window over here, on my uh, V1, I've got a little sky clip. And this is just, this is basically just a, um, just a, a still. There we go. And I've got actually quite a lot of different skies to, to choose from as I want to. And what we're going to do with this one, I'll turn that back on, come back into the color tab, the color room, and I'm going to right click in my nodes and I'm going to add an alpha output. And what this is going to do now, if I feed the alpha channel from my key over into this alpha output, it's now going to key through. It looks a bit weird. And the reason it looks weird is because it's a bit backwards. So let's come into my key here. What we want to do in the key here is just flip the key output. So just inverting that there. And so now we're, taking, we're keeping in the, uh, the boat and we're just keying through to the sky that's underneath on the uh, video track one. So we've got our main tr uh, clip on V2 and our sky on V1. And now if we play that back, we've got our much more interesting sky. In fact, I can come into my uh, V1 just by clicking on the, the little timeline there. I haven't need to make any corrections so that I can make that, obviously I can make that independently of the, uh, of the clip itself. I was going to say, are you making the, cor the color corrections to the entire clip, the composited clip, or are you doing it separately to the image first and then the clip or do you have to do that sometimes? What we're doing is we're doing it separately. So if you have a look at the timeline, I've selected V2 now. So that's one that's orange, and that is my main boat clip. So if I hit um, Shift and H just to highlight that out, that's, that's what I'd be correcting on that. But if I come down to V1, that's my sky clip there. That makes sense. And then I'm assuming once you have them both matched, you can do an overall color correction if you want to give a look to the entire clip. If you wanted to, well, you could do that over the entire, the entire timeline, or you could come in and make a, uh, a compound clip of that there. But gen generally speaking, um, you would just sort of, yeah, there we go, it's a new compound clip. I'll do sky. A compound clip, I'm assuming it's kind of like in Premiere and Nested Clip. Exactly. Uh, do that and then uh, decide that we want it to be in outer space or a, uh, a really bad 90s um, music video and we'll just flip the hue around but there we go can you make a really bad 80s music video oh oh yeah sure hang on let's have a think <laughs> there that's you go. the one that's the one <laughs> that's it you got it cool <laughs> so that's uh, that's a very simple sky replacement um and if you want to you can we're probably not going to do it in this tutorial but if you want to, you can start to track that sky in as well. This is exactly the same sky as we had on the ship scene. And if I just get rid of that, that's how it looks before. And that's the after. And that's just that's using the, uh, the same sort of idea to come out with the, uh, the alpha output. But the only thing is we've just tracked the, uh, just done a match move on the sky as well. So you've done some motion tracking here. So yeah, and this is all done within the DaVinci NLE or absolutely all done within without result. Inf without uh, I believe it's fusion, right? Without Yeah, yeah, right. fusion is the is the other black magic software. But no, we've just done everything here within resolve, which is great, because you don't have to, you know, go out to, uh, to different software to get these these types of things uh types of things done well ben thank you for presenting today this was a, a great tutorial really appreciate it thank you very much now if people want to get a hold of you or learn more about you do you want to give a url yeah sure you can always find me at curiousturtle.com well ben thanks again and to the rest of you please remember to subscribe to our youtube.com slash digimediadu channel and check out more of our tutorials videos podcasts and articles at digimediadude.com so until the next tutorial, I'm Marcelo Lewin, the Digimedia Dude. Cheers, everyone. Yeah.